Good morning, Miss. Okay, so I'm going to start directly, just to not waste time. Uh, I will allow you all to unmute yourselves. Okay, guys, let's start. So, um, on Monday, we started with the first lecture and or the first session, and we talked about uh, adolescence. We said that this is um, a stage or a period of time in which a teenager passes through uh, many changes in his um, outer appearance and his mentality, and also uh, in his behavior and so on. We said that uh, the genre of this text is a personal narrative. And we said that a personal narrative text is a text in which the author narrates a story that happened with him. Uh, today, we are going to continue with the skill. Okay, can you all hear me? Yes, miss. Okay. Today we are going to continue with the skill. The skill for this week is very important because um, we are going to be talking about the character in the story. Okay. What are we going to say about this character? We are going to describe this character. How are we going to describe him? We are going to describe his traits. What are the traits of a person? Who knows? Yeah, and if I'm describing the traits of someone, am I describing the color of his eyes and the color of his hair and his outer appearance and so on? Is this what do we call traits? What's wrong with you today? Hello? Guys? Yes, ma'am. Yes, is yes, ma this, what, what, are, yes. what are the character traits? When I say traits, it means I will describe the outer appearance of the character or his inner traits. Yes, Gabby. Yes, his inner traits. His inner traits, very good. So when I say character traits, it means I am describing the behavior and the attitudes of the character, okay? So I'm describing his inner traits, yani what he thinks about, how does he behave, and so on. So Character traits are often shown with descriptive adjectives. You know, last week we talked about the, script, the, the adjectives. So this week we are going to use adjectives in comprehension and we are going to use them in character traits. So character traits are adjectives. They are adjectives. They are adjectives that are used to describe someone. And when I say traits, it means I cannot see this uh, adjective or this trait on the character's face, but I can see it through his behavior and his attitudes, okay? Yeah, and I can see, for example, that Ali's hair is black. I can see this, but if I said Ali is um, an adventurous guy, can I see this on his face or I see this through his behavior? Through his behavior, miss. Through his behavior. So this is the difference between character traits and between the outer appearance of a person. So I repeat, when I say character 
traits, it means I am describing the inner traits of some of someone. Yeah, the traits that I cannot see, the traits that I cannot see on this person's life, of a face, on his outer appearance. I describe the traits that I can notice through his behavior and his attitude. Okay. To help identify a character's personality traits, I have to look at the main character's personality. How? Yani, throughout the story, as I read the story about this person, I can look at the choices the character has to make and how those choices affect the character and other characters in the story. Yani, I see. What did this character do in this situation? What did he choose to do in this situation? And so on. Look at the character's motives, reasons for doing or doing or uh, or doing or not doing something. These motives also show you that this person is, uh, let's say, a good person, a bad person, a smart person, a patient person, and so on. Look for changes in the characters thinking, behaving, or feelings. You have to uh, focus on his behavior and on his feelings. Think about how you relate the characters, feelings, person, and the characters and the feelings you get about the character. So you have to relate to connect the character's feelings to the character in order to come out with the correct traits, okay? So in general, character traits are um, adjectives that describe a character, but these traits are inner traits and you cannot see them on the character's outer appearance. Instead, you notice them through his attitudes and through his behavior. Let's look at this chart. This chart, Akidi, there are hundreds of adjectives and of traits other than these, but I uh, just included here the uh, ones that you most use in describing. So these are some positive and negative traits. You can memorize them, you can read them on a daily basis just to keep them in your mind, like clean, helpful, friendly, bold or brave, confident, adventurous, hard worker, kind, generous, optimistic, caring, honest, responsible, faithful, sincere, thoughtful, worried, confused, wise, patient, all of these are positive traits. And when I say negative traits, it means also traits, but traits that show the bad side of the character, like show off, uh, braggart, arrogant, mad, stubborn, uh, rude, aggressive, lazy, close-minded, pessimistic, foolish, selfish, troublesome, someone who causes troubles, liar, tricky, jealous, irresponsible, careless, dependent, or greedy. Also, these are some of the negative traits that you might use also in describing a character traits. Okay, clear? Is everything clear, miss? Yes, miss. Yes, miss. Yeah. Okay. Let's continue. Now we are going to start the reading lesson. We talked about peer pressure on Monday. Who can remind us briefly what is peer pressure? Nobody knows what is peer pressure. Yes, Sarah Ahmed. Uh, it's when uh, your friends obligate you to do bad things. And if you didn't do uh, these things, 
they will bully us and make fun of us. Very good. So when I say peer pressure, it means when I am uh, being obliged to do some uh, um, actions or behavior that I don't want to do, but I do them because my friends are obliging me to do them. And because if I do not do these actions, they might make fun of me or uh, or let's say uh, bully me and so on. Type. We said that peer pressure is made up of two, you know, two kinds. What are the kinds of peer pressure? Only a negative peer pressure? The positive. We have negative and Positive, positive peer pressure so type when a, when a negative when a friend is trying to affect you negatively what might they ask you to do smoking uh, stop studying stop studying smoking very good tab if a person is trying to affect you negative uh, positively what might they try uh, to tell you to motivate you to do no i can't you should come she and to a kid wake up miss what's wrong what's wrong Miss, on my side, Miss, can you repeat what you said? Because uh, I didn't hear what, uh, what you said. I said peer pressure can be in two different ways. A negative peer pressure in which your peers might add, ask you to stop studying, to smoke, to go to uh, places which are not suitable to your age, and so on. In other, you know, in, on the other hand, they might be there might be a positive peer pressure in which your friends will ask you uh, to become a better person, to stop doing bad habits and so on, right? This is what, do we, what we meant by, um, by peer pressure, okay? Now we are going to move to the reading lesson and we are going to talk about... Um, the story or the person that is telling us his story. Let's see what's his story about. Set a purpose for reading. So as you read the selection, figure out how peer pressure compels you to do something. The same things compels means obliges you uh, to do the same things as other people of your age if you want them to like you. So sometimes, especially in this stage, you might feel lonely, you have no friends, no one is, um, is talking to you at school, you're always alone and so on. So you will be obliged, you will be compelled to do something that a group of people want in order to allow them to like you. Okay, يعني allow them or to let them like you or accept you as a friend. What conclusions or suggestions can you draw out? Let's see what happened to this guy, to this teenager, whom his friends uh, pressured him or uh, motivated him to do something. Let's see what was this thing and what happened mm -hmm. next. Now we are going... We are going to try to finish the text uh, today يعني on this uh, lecture and the questions will worksheet, we will do them uh, at 12, okay? At 12, you have to attend, يعني I'll be taking attendance same as now, okay? Okay. Okay, okay. I will take attendance at the end of the lecture. Yeah, let's start. Maya, please read. Okay, peer pressure. When 14 year old Rooney came home last night smelling of cigarette smoke, his mother, Mar Margaret, was immediately damned. 
She had been worried about him ever since his hanging out with a group of boys with a ringleader named Joe. Roni described Joe, who was a year older, as a, as a real tyrant who forced the other boys into doing his commands with, with threats that whoever didn't go along with his plans would be out of the group. After some gentle dis after some gentle discussion, Ronnie confessed that Joe had stolen had stolen a packet of his father's cigarettes. He admitted that he had tried to smoke, but he couldn't handle it, admitting that it was wrong and harmful. Okay, so this is the beginning of the story. Here, this is what happened with Roni. So Roni was a 14-year-old uh, teenager. He came home smelling of cigarette and his smell was a smell of cigarette his mother was let's say uh, shocked was confused for what she smelled she had been worried about him ever since he was hanging hanging out with a group of boys with a uh, ring leader named Joe. So his mom was worried about him because he was hanging with a group of boys with a leader. Yani the leader of this group is Joe. Okay. Roni described Joe, who was a year older. So Joe was 15 years old. Roni described him as a real tyrant. It means a real uh, tough person, a real, let's say, um, um, arrogant person, a very tough person who forced the other boys into doing his comments and yani who he forced the other boys in the group uh, to do his orders and yani what he wanted with threats that whoever didn't go along with his plans would be out of the group. Yani if you didn't do what Joe wants, you will be out of the group. After some gentle discussion, Look here, what did they say? They said gentle discussion, okay? So his mom was um, very open-minded, was very calm, was very quiet, was very wise. Did she try to shout or to, uh, to um, insult him, to insult Roni? No. They said after a gentle discussion. This shows that a teenager needs someone very quiet, very calm to talk to him. Because if she uh, had shouted or yelled or uh, insulted Roni, he won't have even told her to, he, you know, that uh, Joe is obliging me to smoke. Right? Yes, he would, he would have lied. But because they said a gentle discussion, his mom was very quiet. Roni confessed, confessed, and he said the truth that Joe had stolen a packet of his father's cigarettes. He admitted that he had tried to smoke. And Kamena, he said the truth and he said that he tried to smoke, but he couldn't handle it, admitting that it was wrong and harmful so he felt that this thing the, the smoking uh, is wrong and it is also harmful please yes miss read a kid aging 13 to 19 experience intense peer pressure parents are always concerned about their children of the age group because it can sometimes lead to a risky behavior Learning to fit in is a major social advance that needs to be encouraged through, though only with limits. This is done when you give your child the confidence to disagree. You should keep, you should help your kid to feel at ease when facing his peers. Here are some simple ways to handle such situations. Okay, kids aging, yeah, the kids between the age 13 to 19 experience intense peer pressure. Yeah, their peers um, pressure them in, yeah, in intense. Parents are always concerned, are always worried about their children. Yes, Hadi. It was by mistake. Okay. Because I'm not able to lower it. Okay, okay, it's okay. Learning to fit in a major social advance that needs to be encouraged, though only with limits. So parents should give their uh, 
kids, especially the teenagers, the confidence to disagree. She wanted to disagree, to say no. Yani if my friend asked me to smoke, I will have the confidence, the strength to say no, I don't want to smoke, I don't want to drink, I don't want to go to this place, I don't want to have drugs, and so on. Uh, and learn to your kids to be strong. You should help your kid to feel at ease when facing his peers. Yeah, not afraid, not worried. Here are some simple ways to handle such situations. Okay, now we're going to see what are these ways that allow us to handle these situations. Ali Hassan Basmarid, please. Paragraph three. Mm -hmm. Yes, first way is the first way is to help your child bounce back from disappointment when your teenager feels hurt or uh, rejected Rejected? try to reinforce a sense of belonging which son one such disappointment occurs okay. So the first point is to help your child bounce back from disappointment. Yeah, and if your friends don't want you because you are not doing what they want, this is normal. No need to feel disappointed. You have to give them confidence all the time. When your teenager feels hurt or rejected, it means his friends or his peers don't want them, don't want uh, to be friends with him and so on. Try to reinforce a sense of belonging when such disappointments occur. Sense of belonging, like it's okay, you don't um, belong to this group of people. You belong to your family, to your parents. We are always here next to you. We won't leave you alone and so on. Continue. When your child feels excluded from a group, he will pretend indif indifference. You should encourage him to express true feelings. Your so child you should read. encourage him to express through feelings. And this is the most important thing in our lives as teenagers or as grown-ups or whatever. You should always express through feelings. You should always show others what you feel. You should always show your parents that I am sad, I am worried, I am angry, I am afraid. Always be honest with your parents. Okay, continue your child your child should realize that uh, it's normal to fall in our uh, in or out of favor with a group and that he can uh, disagree with them without ending friendship yes so your child should realize that it's okay and it's normal to uh, be um, yeah, and to do what your what the group of friends want, and it is normal to say no. Ah, if I think that this is harmful and I don't want to do it, just say no. And this is normal to disagree with them is something normal, and no need to end your friendships. Just say no, and this won't lead to ending your friendships. Let's continue. We still have paragraphs four and five. Hadil, read please. The second way is to put confidence in your teenage child. See, so by this, you is the most important factor of being strong, of being able to say no, of facing anything in the world. You should be self confident, and your parents should help you to be more confident. Continue. By this, you would be encouraging him and planting the sense of responsibility in him. Yes. At that stage, he would be a productive man with high self-esteem. Self-esteem, with high self-confidence. So we should encourage our kid. We should encourage our teenagers to become strong, to become able to say no, to become responsible, to become protect, productive, to become um, to be with high self esteem, and so on. Continue, Hadid, paragraph five, please. Passing successfully through all the above requirements, an understanding will be achieved between your child and members of groups. They will accept each other even with, when they disagree. That will make it easier for them to say no to peer pressure. 
and perilous behavior. Above all, that will help in filling up the gap between you and your children. Okay, so passing successfully through all the above requirements, yani giving your child all of these requirements and understanding will be achieved between your child and members of groups or his friends. They will accept each other even if they were different, even uh, when they disagree. That will make it easier for them to say no to peer pressure and uh, perilous behavior, يعني, any behavior that they don't want to do. Above all, that will help in filling up the gap between you and your children. When you are doing this, you are filling the gap between you and your children. You are allowing your child to be honest with you. You are allowing your child to tell you about his fears, about the things that he is afraid of, about what's happening with him and so on. And this is the most important thing in the relation between parents and their children. Honesty is the most important thing between parents and children. When a teenager or a children is honest, with his parents, he won't face any problem. But he's, if he is afraid to tell his parents about what's going with him, he will always face problems and will never get out of them. Okay? Done. Okay, I, I, I don't know if this is clear. Is this clear? Yes? Hello? Yes, yes. yes Miss. I don't know if this, if this is clear, but the text is here in front of you. And um, I want you to uh, start doing exercise A. There are three questions. Start doing them. I will give you two minutes or a Liana, okay? Go ahead. Okay, yalla guys, what is peer pressure? In general, يعني, in two words, what is peer pressure? Pressure from your friends. Pressure from your friends, to do what? To do like dangerous stuff and bad stuff. To do dangerous stuff, bad stuff, very good. Okay, that. Guys. Um... The second question, how does the anecdote event in paragraph one, Jan Roni's case, relate to the topic of peer pressure? Yes, Sidian. He was forced by his friend to smoke. Yes, but how was this related to peer pressure? Jan? How did we relate this story to peer pressure? Uh, he smoked just to fit in. Yes, okay. So, in what sense can we consider paragraph one as a problem solution, state the problem and the outlet? What was the problem in paragraph one? This is a very important question. What was the problem in paragraph one? No, the problem was in, uh, his mom was worried about him. 
No. Other he than was smoking. Very good. The problem is that he was pressured by his peers to smoke. What was the solution? To feel confident and say Excellent. no. He felt confident and he admitted or confessed to his mom. Very good. Allow. Uh, okay, unmute yourselves, all of you now. Amjad Ghanawi. Ahmad Salham. Kara, uh, Karim. I don't know Karim Zayed. It's the first time that she doesn't attend. Selin Najde. Najde. Selin. Selin, hello, Kenton. Okay. Uh, Maya. Yes, hi. Present. Yes, Present. Maya. Present. Okay, Hadir. Yes. Uh, Adam. Yes. Ismail. Yes. Yes, Miss. Hadi. Mm -hmm. Oh, Gabi. Gabi. Miss, okay. if you said my name, I'm yes, here, yes. but uh, I'm oh. lagging a lot. That's oh, why if you I said, said I didn't uh, answer. Fatima couldn't attend. She doesn't have internet connection. Tia? Here. Okay. Daddy? Oh, here. Here. Yes. Uh, Ali Hassan Basma? You know. Ali Fadi Basma? Riwa? Here. Serin Ftoune? Alma? Here. Sabin? Here, Miss. Abbas Asi? Here. Sara Balhas. Just a second, it's not here. Okay, Leah Bustane. Leah. Here. Okay. Sara Hamede. Sara Isa. Here. Okay, Sara Hamede, did I say your name? Yes. Okay, type guys. Now we finished at 12. Please, please, please do not skip the sessions. We have to do the worksheet. For this week, let me just tell you something before we leave. Nahna for this week, we are going to have a quiz in adjectives. Yeah, I will send you on parents group. You know, the quiz is going to be based on the lecture of week 29. Hey, you are going to have a flip grid speaking graded a kid. And this flip grid is going to be narrate a story in which you was once pressured by your friends to do something bad. And what happened to you? Yeah, narrate a very short story of three to four minutes. Hala, this time you are going to find that there's something different in Flipgrid. Yani best photo on the link, they are going to ask you about a username. For the username, it will be ISI. I will give you everything, yani the details to the group, but I'm just telling you from now. Okay, so the quiz is going to be in adjectives. If you want to start studying, you can start studying adjectives, revise the lecture of week 29. And uh, the Flipgrid is going to be about um, narrate a story in which you was once pressured by your friends or your peers to do something bad, to smoke or whatever, and to choose it and how you face this and so on. Or maybe this, or if you, uh, once you were put in an embarrassing moment so one of these two i will you know i will uh, choose one of these two topics today but anyways it's narration yani you are going to narrate a story okay this was everything for today now we are going at 12 to continue we are at 12 can no other lecture in the week we are going to do the worksheet so Kamen, I will take attendance. يعني ما ما تفكروا إنه at twelve إنه هيك لا it's a, a session a session يعني. So I'll be waiting for you at twelve. Thank you all for attending, and I'll see you at twelve.